Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the secrets of working with brush profiles in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, I just want to introduce you to what we're going to be looking at. We're going to look at brush profiles in Illustrator and I'm going to cover how you can color them with gradients, how you can create this sort of effect with a dotted line that is just a brush profile and a brush setting. This is just a brush profile. I'm going to show you how you can create something like the fish as a profile. I'm going to show you how you can use profiles once you've created them for interesting effects and how you can use patterns with them. Basically, by the end of this video, you should be able to understand, use and even save brush profiles and you'll find that they're a really, really handy way of creating some graphics in Illustrator. Now I've already created a brand new artboard in this document because I want access to these brush profiles so I'm just going to click on Artboard 2 and we can get started. First thing I'm going to do is to draw a horizontal line using the Line Segment tool. So I'm just going to drag out a horizontal line and hold Shift as I do so, so it's perfectly horizontal. Now I'm going to apply a brush profile to the line. These are variable width profiles and we have six of them available by default plus the seventh which is just uniform. So I'm going to choose this width profile here. So our width profile is this triangle but we're not really seeing it and the reason is that the stroke is just so small. So I'm going to start increasing the stroke. I'm just going to click in here and press the up arrow and I can shift up arrow to make it even faster increasing the size of it. And you can see here now that we're seeing the actual width profile on this line. This is just a horizontal line, but it's got this interesting profile on it now. We can use the pen tool to draw a line and we can apply a width profile to it. So let's just draw a little S-shaped line here. And once I'm finished with the line, I can select it and apply a profile to it. Let's apply this width profile. Same issue as before, the stroke is just not wide enough to cope with the profile so I'm going to increase the stroke width and here is the profile applied to our curvy brush. Now this profile is also being affected by the settings for the stroke. So I'm just going to click on the line and let's have a look at stroke because things like the cap are going to affect how the profile is applied to the line and depending on the profile you're using this may have more or less an effect. So let's go to this path for example and let's have a look at the caps for this path because it's going to affect them considerably. If I select the rounded cap you can see that the line gets a little bulb at the end. So these lines are going to be affected not only by the profile that we're using but also by the settings that we have for the stroke. Now if you want to know how I get to this appearance panel I just click window and then appearance is in the list and this allows me to get to the appearances for a line or a shape and just find it really easy to use and we're going to use it a little bit in this video tutorial. So now that we've seen basically how we can apply profiles to our brushes, let's say that we can change the color of our brushes just really easily. This profile is not affecting the color at all, so we can just recolor our brushes as we would normally do so. But we can also do other things. We can add patterns and we can add gradients, so let's see how to do that. I've opened up some gradients here that are available in the gradients swatches that are shipped with Illustrator. To get to these, click the flyout menu here on the swatches panel and choose open swatch library and then gradients. And there are all these sets of gradients that ship with Illustrator. Now I've already opened some of them so I'm going to select on this line and I'm going to apply a gradient to the line and then I'll click on the gradient that I want to use. Now the gradient panel can also be used to adjust the gradient for the line just exactly the same as you could do it for a shape. So I have the gradient panel open here. Again, if you need to get to any of these panels like the swatches and the gradient, just open the window menu and all your panels are accessible here. The gradient that we have applied to this line is a linear gradient but we can change that and we could apply a radial gradient and also how the gradient is visible within the line is going to be impacted by these settings here. So if you 
added along the stroke or across the stroke, you'll get different settings for some of these gradients. Here's the linear gradient and let's see how it looks, for example, across the stroke because this gives us a really interesting effect. You can see that the gradient is actually being pulled and stretched across this stroke. So there's a very interesting way of getting a multicolor element just with a brush profile applied to a line and a linear gradient applied within it. So there are other settings here that you can change and each one of them is going to impact how that gradient is applied to the line. Let's just go back to the first artboard because this was my little example. This is just a regular line. It has no profile associated with it, just the uniform profile. So it's just a regular line. But this is all three instances of the gradient applied to the line. So if I just select this line, you'll see that the gradient here is linear and it's using this apply gradient across stroke setting. Here the gradient is a radial and this is this first setting within stroke and then this is this setting here along the stroke and then this one is applying it across the stroke. So you may want to make a little sampler like this for yourself so you can see how linear and radial gradients differ in how they're applied to a line just simply by selecting different strokes. Let's go back to our example because we're going to have a look too at other things that we can do in addition to applying gradients to a stroke that has a brush profile associated with it we can also apply patterns. Now there are some default pattern swatches that you'll find in your pattern collection here. You can also get to additional pattern swatches by clicking the fly out menu here, open swatch library patterns and you have basic graphics, you have some decorative patterns and you have some nature patterns. I'm just going to open animal skins because this gives us access to some animal skin patterns and let's use this one here which is the Jaguar and I've now applied that to the stroke so the pattern is this within the stroke on this brush line or this line. Let's now resize this line so I'm going to select the line and choose object transform scale. Now I can click on preview so I can see what's happening here. I want to transform the object and I want to make this line quite a lot bigger so I'm going to take it up to say 200%. You can see now that the pattern has also been scaled. That's because transform patterns is selected. If I don't select that, then the pattern will be inserted into this stroke at its original size. So you get a choice. You can transform the object, but you can also make the pattern bigger if that's what you want. So I'll click OK. You can also rotate a pattern. So uh, with my shape selected, I'm going to choose Object Transform Rotate. And this time I don't want to transform the object, but I do want to transform the pattern within the object. And look what happens when I start altering the angle. The pattern is actually being rotated inside the object. And you can move a pattern with inside this stroke. Object Transform Move. Again, this time we don't want to transform our object, but we do want to transform the pattern. We want to move the pattern. I'm going to zero everything out so that the pattern is not moved at all. And now let's see what happens when we start increasing the horizontal value. Well, the pattern is being moved within the brush profile applied to the stroke. So we can position the pattern exactly where we want to. Now this is just standard behavior for patterns. There's nothing in particular that's happening simply because we're using a brush profile here. And you'll find that I have another video here on patterns that if this stuff is unfamiliar to you, you may want to go and watch that video because it covers all this pattern tools that allow you to rotate, size patterns, recolor them and everything. So there's our line that has this angle or this variable width profile associated with it and it's filled with a pattern. If we change the profile, it's just changing the profile, all the pattern settings are remaining in place, but of course they're editable as well. So let's just move that out of the way and let's have a look now at a profile that is applied to a line that has a stroke effect on it. 
this is an effect that you might have seen used elsewhere and you might have wondered how it was created. I'm just going to grab a color for my stroke here. I've got no fill and I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. Now I'm going to take that line and in the appearance panel, I've opened up the appearance panel, I'm going to click on stroke and I want to make this a dotted line. So I'm going to take up the weight to about 12 points. You can use any value at all. There's none of this is critical. Well, not the weight anyway. This is critical. You need to select cap. So it needs to have a rounded end on it. You do need to select dash line and then you set this up so that the dash is always zero. There's no question about that. If you want a dotted line, the dash is zero. And then the gap is whatever value you want to use. If you have a gap width that is smaller than the weight of the line, the dots are actually attached to each other. So they start to run into each other. As soon as you have a gap that is the same weight as the line, so 12 points and 12 points, the dots are going to be side by side and just touching. And then as soon as you increase the gap value beyond that, then the dots start separating. And this is the same for any value of the weight. You just look for that relationship between the gap and the weight. Well, I'm going to increase mine a little bit here just so it's a little bit easier to see. So here I have a 20 point gap and a 17 point line. That's why I'm seeing the spaces here. But look what's available here in the stroke panel. This is our brush profile. So look what happens when we select this width profile. The brush takes on this really interesting effect. The dots are sized and you can see that they're still round dots, but they're sized within that brush profile. Apply that same profile and effect to a curved line. I'm just drawing out a curved line here. I'm just going to select on that line and I'm going to sample the settings that are applied to this line and apply them to my line. Well, the dots have come in, but the brush profile hasn't, but that's really easy to just attach here. And this is the kind of effect that we can get. A line that is curved, it's got a dotted stroke applied to it, and then that dotted stroke is being resized using the profile. And if we want to add a further effect to this line, we can do so. Let's just alt drag a copy of this away so that we have the original. Let's go instead of selecting a solid stroke, let's go and apply a gradient to it. And when you apply a gradient to it, the dots are recolored along that line. So you can see that we have quite a sophisticated effect here and it's all just a single line. It's fully editable so we can go into the line with the direct selection tool. We can click on an anchor point and we can reshape this line. And as we reshape it, all of these effects are being reapplied to the reshape line. So, so much for using the brush profiles that are shipped with Illustrator. Let's now look at creating our own brush profiles. I'm just going to move these pieces out of the way and let's go and create our own brush profile. I'm going to start with a horizontal line and I just want it to have the default appearance. So I'm going to press the letter D and then just turn off the fill so it just has a stroke on it. To make a brush profile, we're going to use the width tool and it shares a toolbar position with the wrinkle and scallop and pucker tool, but it's the width tool we want. And with the width tool, we can just drag, click and drag on a line to make the profile. So I've just dragged out the tail of my fish and now I want it to start coming in. So I'm just going to click and drag to make it come in so that this is the tail of my fish. It's bending in and I want it to bend out so I can just put in another marker here and just bend it out so that this looks a bit more like a fish tail. For the body of the fish, I'm going to start about here and drag. And you can see that each of these lines is that I'm drawing is exactly the same either side of the fish. And for now, that's what we want. I'm just going to click and drag and this is going to be the approximate shape of my fish. To reshape the fish, I can take an existing line and then just drag it along. So this allows me to keep the width that I've created but move it elsewhere along the 
brush profile to reshape the line. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and add the fin and I'm just going to add a small fin to the fish. For this I want my line to appear or the change to appear only on one side of the fish. So I'm going to click and drag and when I get to about where I want the difference to be I'm going to start alt dragging and that makes the line on one side of the brush profile different to the other. And any time if I alt drag I'm going to make a change that only affects one side of my shape. And so I'm able to create a shape that is different on either side if I want to. Pretty much the only thing that you can't do with this width profile is you can't do an undercut. So we can't do something that curves in. But we can do edges that are very, very steep. And one of the ways of doing that is to alt drag on a line to create a duplicate of the line right next door to where you want this very sharp change. And now I'm going to alt drag on this to make a very sharp change. And the closer that these two adjustments are to each other, the sharper the change is. But that's as sharp as you can get it. I don't want mine to be quite that sharp, but you can see that you can get some really interesting effects using this tool. Now I'm going to call this good for now because I'm really not going to lose a lot of sleep over this fish profile. What I do want to do is show you how you can save it. Up here this is the profile that we've currently created. To save it I'm just going to click Add to Profiles and I'm going to call this Fish 3. And now it can be used like any other width profile. Here's a curve profile attached to this line. Here's our new fish. We can also reverse it. So I'm going to the Appearance panel. I'm going to open up Stroke. And you can see here next to Brush Profile are the options for actually adjusting the profile. So we can flip it along the line so the fish goes in the other direction. And we can turn the fish upside down as well. So you can adjust these profiles that you create yourself as well as any of the profiles that you have inside Illustrator. Now I have a video on saving custom profiles and swatches so that you can get them back later on. If you add a brush profile to a document that is saved as a document profile then it will be accessible every time you open Illustrator. So I'd encourage you to go and watch that video if you're interested. But before we finish up let's just see what happens when we create a profile. This one is perfectly symmetrical and it's a really interesting shape. So I'm just going to apply a color to it and I'm going to narrow it down to probably about 60 points. I want it to look something like this. I also want the line to be a little bit shorter so let's just shorten it and in shortening it of course the profile is just reapplied to the shorter line. Now I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform and I want to rotate it around this midpoint on this side. So I'm going to click here, I'm going to click Preview. I'm going to add in say 20 copies and now I'm going to adjust the angle and as I do you can see that we're creating this rotated shape in Illustrator and this line is rotated a number of times so that it is creating a sort of floral effect. If we change the weight of the line, if we make it a thinner line then the brush profile is just being applied to it. We can change its color, we can apply a gradient to it or even a pattern fill. So there are some of the things that you can do with brush profiles in Illustrator. They're extremely powerful and they're not often really understood as to just exactly what you can achieve with them. So I, I hope you've learned something from this video tutorial. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, and a whole lot more.